geometry. I mean, it's basic mm -hmm. geometry. But basically, when we're talking about puzzles, we're talking about spatial relationships. And so we're talking about the, the space they take up and the, the shapes that they have and, and looking at things that way. And obviously, you don't start your little, little kids with this type of a jigsaw puzzle. Um, when my children were little, we had the wooden puzzles that were about this this large that had the little pegs that they could grab on uh -huh. and put the pieces in. And, you know, basic farm animals and that kind of thing. And that's really appropriate for your, for your preschoolers. Uh, when they get a little older, you might still use the wooden variety. And I have, a, I have one of the United States that's really large. But what's nice about this, and what That's helps... The whole Midwest falls out. Yeah, you're right. The whole Midwest just fell out. Is that um, on these type of puzzles, you actually can see the shape in the puzzle for each of the states. And so kids can start to uh, match shapes with the position on the puzzle board. And that can teach them a lot about social studies and, and the capitals and all those kinds of things that they learn when they're in, in grade school. So this is the kind of puzzle you would move to next after the... Oops, maybe, maybe, if you can put it back together. <laughs> if you're smarter than the puzzle, and, and then you could uh, learn states and capitals that way and, and where the position that they have in relationship to the other states in the United States. So that's, a, that's another thing that you could do with puzzles. But then as your children get a little bit older, you might move to a puzzle that's something of their interest. Uh, you can see that we had a child Pokemon. at one time in my family that was interested in Pokemon. And so we bought a 200 piece Pokemon puzzle and the pieces were much larger. But again, what we were able to do with this was um, our children could see the shapes, learn to put them together, uh, and they could also identify uh, from the picture the different coloration schemes, and that kind of helped them as well. And that's what we want kids to look at is not only the shape, but the patterns of the colors and the shading as well. So that would be the next step after you get off the wooden type of puzzles. Um, obviously then you can uh, move to a larger number of pieces. This one had 300 and then you can see we did the Harry Potter phase as oh, well. Yeah. We had several Harry Potter puzzles and um, this one had 300 pieces and the pieces are a little bit smaller so we're starting to progress up and, and uh, help our kids uh, be able to do a little more complicated version of the jigsaw puzzle. And then um, there are also puzzles uh, that are in between, that are even smaller uh, numbers of pieces. I think, I think I had one for my kids when they were little that only had 50 pieces, so it didn't take very long right. to put together. And there's like 25 and 50. Right, and, th and that's nice because then your kids don't get too bored with it and they can see progress pretty quickly. But here we have one that's, again, a historical one, and this one is from uh, President Eisenhower. It's a, it's a picture of their home. And so... What, what we've done is we've started to pre-make this jigsaw puzzle or put it together. And again, you can be looking at, I'm going to let you try to put some pieces in. Okay. But there's some strategies that we want kids to understand too about, about being able to put puzzles together. And that's that first and foremost, we usually look for the outside edges because that's the easy part is if you can frame it in oh, first. Yeah. Once, so you get... once you get the four corners and the outside edges, um, it, it's a lot easier to start filling in. And I think you had some tips, too. For... Well, when I was sitting here trying to put this together just so that everybody had an idea of what it looked like, you were going, well, maybe this goes here. And I'm, no, 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 no. I said the shading's a little bit different on this one than it is this one. So I just kind of kept looking for where kept that looking color for where the shading was. was. And you found it, didn't you? Yeah. Good job. The other thing that is helpful sometimes when you have a jigsaw puzzle, and is it's what I've done here, is if you're going to use this table for your di dining room table or your dinner table, you obviously don't want your puzzle out here. So sometimes we would, would set up a card table separately, and, and we would just leave it up, and every once in a while we'd go by and put together part of the pieces when we saw one that we thought fit. Um, but you can also get a board of some kind and then be able to move it on and off your, your dining room table if that's what you have available. So lots of good things can come from kids uh, doing this, but it really it, it helps them later on and when they're looking at patterns in math and, and shapes and sizes of figures. So um, puzzles are a great thing and our family has enjoyed them and I used to have them in my classroom as well. Kids did them when they were done with their work. So it's a good time filler, but it's also a very educational at the same time. Right. So. You can learn a lot from a puzzle. 
Well, thanks for joining us here on Just Desserts. Join us again next time for more information about things you can do at home with your kids.